So I have an army of bikes that came in this week and are all sold um, for the most part, unless somebody backs out. But oh, all these San Quentins, <laughs> I need a bigger hallway. Ah, raining in Houston again. <laughs> kind of sums up uh, my feelings this morning. There's biking routes. Good morning. Welcome to the Biking Roots family. Well, this is a, a wall in our shop, and this is why we've done it, guys, being able to hopefully play some role in uh, helping people get on mountain bikes and have fun out there, getting exercise, helping their health, getting out there with their kids and friends and families. This is why we've done it. The greatest adventure is what lies ahead. All right, so let's get this uh, awful video over with. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, I haven't wanted to make this video for obviously a lot of reasons, but the time has come. I'm not going to cry about it. I've done that uh, enough already. So uh, here's what's going on. So for one, I just want to say this isn't the end of Biking Roots. Uh, Biking Roots, the name, the channel, it's still going to be around. I'm still going to do videos, just in a different format. Uh, we actually also are doing a different channel, uh, Healthy Roots Life, which is uh, geared towards helping people get healthy uh, on and off the bike and retake their health in their lives. Uh, some of you may have noticed, but I'm down 30 pounds uh, over the last seven months. Feel great. And uh, yeah, it's been an awesome journey. And so uh, my wife and I are trying to help others also uh, on their journey uh, take back their health. So if you're interested in that, uh, Healthy Roots Life, uh, we'll be doing videos on there and also on Instagram and on our website. So yeah, so that's where we will be. Uh, we're just not gonna have a physical retail location. And there's a lot of reasons for that. Uh, at least right now, who knows in the future, maybe open up another one someday, but right now, it just doesn't make sense. All right, so before I get into why, I just wanna first say thank you so much to all of you guys. Everyone that's ever watched any of these videos on this platform, uh, that have commented, that have bought bikes from us because they saw our videos, uh, all the local people, people that have traveled from all over the country, all over the world in some cases, to come and see us, to support us. Uh, you guys are awesome and I, my family and I appreciate, anyway, we appreciate your support. It's been an awesome five years. We met so many people during that time, uh, locally and online. And uh, yeah, it's, it's been an awesome adventure. So I want the adventure to continue just in a different format. We'll call it Biking Roots 3.0 because moving to this shop was kind of 2.0. So we'll say 3.0. So yeah, so if you've ever bought anything from us, uh, if you ever just come in to support us and uh, you know, thank you so much for your support and uh, couldn't have done it without you guys. So I appreciate you so much. All right, so reasons for closing a retail location. All right, so some of you may know, some of you may not, but basically the bicycle industry right now is just not in a good shape. Uh, I know a lot of other outdoor industries are feeling this as well. Uh, I'll blame, <laughs> there's a lot of things to blame, but for one, it's like COVID really helped us because we opened right before COVID in 2019, so just over five years ago, and then COVID happened in 2020. So it was amazing. Uh, and that, but then that also killed the industries uh, because of overproduction, inflation, all kinds of stuff just all contributed to basically the situation we're in now where demand has gone down and there's way too much inventory. I'm not going to say I haven't made mistakes. Um, I, I have made mistakes. I bought stuff I probably shouldn't have, bought too much of something. Uh, not as bad off as probably some retailers, but yeah, I mean, shoot, in the end, I realize I'm not perfect. I'm not from the bike industry. Uh, I came from uh, different retail, from car dealerships, from lighting, from insurance, uh, but always with a passion and experience with biking. So uh, shoot, I opened a mountain biking shop in a mountainless city. So <laughs> it was actually a t-shirt we wanted to make. Maybe we still will, but anyway, so yeah, I'm in Houston, Texas with a mountain bike shop. All right, so talking about the bicycle industry, I just wanna dispel some misconceptions. Some people think because they see these huge discounts online they think that like the bicycle manufacturers are like killing it like they have huge profits and then the bicycle retailers you know they also you know and this is just you know now it's coming back to them you can't just gouge people and da 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 i'll be honest the i don't know anyone that's like loaded in the bicycle industry like it's just not an industry that it's it's industry run by people that 
are very passionate about a sport. They're not in it to like make a killing and to like, you know, become rich. Uh, that's just not this industry. So uh, there's lots of, and if you think that, you probably just don't know the industry well enough or you haven't been around other industries to know like their profits and their balance sheets and see what they actually make. So uh, anyway, the bicycle industry is not that. So what you're seeing is basically when you see bikes for 30, 40, 50% off, like that's basically wiped out the retailers. They're selling it at a loss because you have to think bikes are so big. They take up so much space. Some of the big brands I've heard are spending like a million dollars a month just to house the excess bikes, taking on new warehouse leases, keeping bikes at the port. Like it's just a mess. There was just, there's too many bikes. There have been for years and it's just not, it's not cheap to store, transport and build and house these big complicated pieces of machinery. So unfortunately, as a bicycle retailer, you get stuck kind of holding the bag. It's kind of like hot potato where it's like, oh, I don't want it, I don't want it. And then, oh, now I have it. It's my problem to try to move it. And so it's tough because a lot of the bike brands, you know, they'll, they raise the price to, we'll say $800. And then suddenly, oh, and you can't advertise, you can't sell it online. You know, a lot of restrictions that keep us from doing that, which other brand, other, other online retailers can, but we can't. So that makes it tough too to compete. But anyway, they'll slash the prices and then basically say, well, sorry, the bike's now $500. Oh, you paid $500 for it? Okay, well, sorry, you should have sold it faster. So that stinks because obviously as a retailer, as a, as a brick and mortar retailer, you know, you have rent, you have insurance, you have taxes, you have credit card fees, you have so many things that are part of running a business that come out of that profit and if there isn't a profit, then you're losing money on every sale, which that's what's basically has happened for the last few years. So yeah, so we would buy bikes and then they cut the prices. And so it's like, okay, it makes it tough. Then it's like, I'm not gonna buy bikes. So then it's like, you know, you don't wanna buy bikes because you have to pay taxes in Texas. You have to pay taxes on all your inventory every year. Uh, so you don't wanna have a big inventory. And then, uh, and also you don't wanna be stuck. And then suddenly the prices go and the bikes you have are worth nothing. Another thing with having a retail bike shop is you have you have to have a space, obviously, and uh, you know because the the regulations of bike brands and email to sell parts is you have to have a brick and mortar location. Which I've also found a bunch of online places that don't have that, but yet somehow they have tons and tons of parts and bikes. So yeah, there's some stuff going on in the industry that is not even for everyone, which is making it very tough to compete uh, because, you know, you'll see you'll see parts that are less than what you paid for them online at different places. And some of these shops are going out of business, unfortunately, which stinks. But yeah, it just it makes the it's a wild, wild west out there as far as pricing right now. Also with a retail space, uh, which and that's the reason we prompted us to make this difficult decision was so three years ago, we signed a lease on this place for a three year. We negotiated the three. They wanted to do five. I didn't want to project that far out because I don't know. I, originally, I wanted to buy a place, but that didn't end up working out. We don't know how long we're going to be in Houston for one. Um, there's been we wanted to kind of move for a while, too. And so it's like they were wanting me to sign a, another, they were wanting me to sign a five-year lease and the rent was going up. So it's like a combination of slow sales and yeah, our rent's going up and we have to commit to five more years. And I don't know what the bike industry is going to be in five years. And, you know, I'm on the hook for the lease. I either have to sell it to someone else or I have to pay it every month. I'm legally obligated to do that. So leases can definitely uh, push you in one way or another in this business. Houston market's been tough lately as well. Just uh, a lot of it weather related. Uh, we've had a rough year. Uh, we've had, you know, crazy storms. We had a hurricane where we were at without power. The shop was closed for a week. That really kind of started the snowball of just like terrible sales. And, you know, people that normally would buy, spend money on bikes or upgrades, you know, they're spending it on fixing their house because a tree went through their house or on their car or their fence, you know? So stuff, it's just like disposable income for mountain bikes, it's like it's being spent on other things. So it's been tough. And uh, yeah, it's just the way that, way that the market is right now. So that kind of brings me towards like, what's the future of the uh, independent bike shop or the bike industry? In my opinion, I think the current model is just broken. Uh, the whole like having an independent bike shop where you make money off selling bikes and selling like, you know, soft goods and parts and accessories and things like that like that's just not 
I don't think is ever coming back. And that's not necessarily like this industry's fault. That's just the change of what's happening in how people buy things, right? So yeah, people just buy things differently now. And, uh, and that's just kind of the reality of things, you know, Amazon, and we actually have an Amazon store now. Uh, so you can go there and click on our link and help us out. If there's something you're buying on Amazon uh, and want to support us, we have some idea lists and things that we suggest on there now. So yeah, we're kind of trying to work with the, uh, the flow of how people are buying things instead of trying to fight it or work against it. So in the future, I think you'll have probably a lot less brands, a lot less shops, and the shops will probably be more like service oriented, like the car business where you just have like dedicated service shops that they may sell a few things. Uh, maybe in the future, you'll have some brands do like a contract where you, you know someone can come with a warranty issue to that service shop. But I think the traditional bike shop uh, where people just come in and shop and walk out with a bike, I think that's completely changed. And uh, that's just kind of the reality of the way that uh, businesses progress and, and things change. I think you'll see a lot more brands go direct to consumer. You also see a lot more like company owned. The bigger brands will just have like some company stores and like hotter markets uh, where people can come in and see the bikes. If it's like a destination shop or a destination location uh, where people go quite often to bike, uh, I think that will be more of kind of how you shop for bikes. And you'll do your research online, which is what we're going to continue doing, just kind of talking about bikes and helping people make the decision, just not from an actual physical shop. All right, so uh, there's a whole lot more I can talk about this, but I'm trying to keep this as short as possible and to the point. Um, if you do have any questions about the bike industry, if you're interested in starting a shop, I wouldn't necessarily recommend it right now, but if you have any questions about the bike industry or you know your opinion about some of the things that you've seen or have gone on, let me know in the comments. But in summary, we uh, because we have to be out of this space in the next month, uh, we are basically selling everything that we can, uh, unfortunately. And I, I tried to keep prices where they were at as long as I could uh, because I didn't want to do to others what has been done to me over the last few years. But in the end, it's like I'm running out of time and I have to put this stuff somewhere. And so I'm going to have a lot of bills to pay even after I close the shop. And so. Uh, I will have them at a, at a good discount, uh, but unfortunately, like I'm not just going to give stuff away at crazy prices because I'd rather just hang on to it and wait till the spring, if if necessary, to at least make something or at least break even on some stuff. So, so yeah, if you're interested in anything we have, uh, let me know. Uh, you can go onto our website and see what we currently have. Thankfully, I haven't bought a lot of stuff. I've been nervous over the last little bit, so thankfully, I don't have a ton of bikes left, uh, which is good and bad. Bad that, you know, I don't have a ton of money to recoup uh, when I'm closing this down, but at the same time, I'm not sitting on a whole bunch of stuff that I have to sell right away, so that's good. Uh, so anyway, that's, uh, that's the story of what's going on. Last thing I wanna say, like if you have a local bike shop, continue supporting them. Uh, I understand that the way people buy things, and you know, I, I don't fault people for buying the way they do and for us basically not being able to like make money on stuff. Uh, that's not necessarily someone else's fault and you're just looking for the best deal and i understand that uh, but if there is something where you know hey at least try your shop some of our customers have been awesome like hey man can you order this for me instead of just like hey i bought this online can you install it so i appreciate uh, all those that have, have supported us and if you can support your local bike shop because uh, well, if things continue, there may not be very many left. So anyway, uh, on that note, I don't wanna end on that note. I don't wanna end on that note, okay. Mountain biking's awesome. It's gonna continue being awesome. It's not going away. Just the way we buy things is changing. And so uh, it's been an awesome ride, guys. And like I said, we're not going away. So if you haven't subscribed to the channel and you've watched some of our videos, hit that subscribe button. We would appreciate it as we try to grow this a little bit more. And uh, we'll see you in the next video. Uh, take care out there. Bye.